Hey, uh, this is Erica Chamberlain, the daughter of Lee Chamberlain. Today, uh, I have the fun and the pleasure of getting to sit down with Bill Funt, who is the son of Alan Funt, who those of you who are old enough to remember may remember the show, Candid Camera. The other family, talented family member um, that Bill has was Elaine... Laren. Elaine Laren. Elaine Laren. Elaine Laren was uh, one of the writers for the Electric Company in its first year. And that would mean that she wrote for and got to work with uh, Lee Chamberlain, Morgan Freeman, Bill Cosby, Rita Moreno, Skip Pennant, The Short Circus, all the one- Judy Grobart, all the wonderful cast of the Electric Company which was a show designed to teach kids how to read and write and enunciate and <coughs> pronounce and to make it fun for them. I am uh, William Russell Funt, a.k.a. Bill, a.k.a. Billy Funt, educator, producer, performer. And uh, my connection to Lee is that uh, my aunt, Elaine Laren, was the head lyricist for the first season of The Electric Company, and so uh, the two of them worked together rather closely, and a lot of my aunt's best songs were sung by Lee, and a lot of Lee's best musical moments were written by my aunt. So, there you go. So you mentioned that some of uh, Elaine's best work were, was sung by Lee? Can you remember what those were? Can you tell us? Sure. Um, the one that I like an awful lot uh, was a soft shoe number with uh, Lee and Morgan Freeman called Thanks to Th. And it was, you know, teaching the, um, the um, phoneme TH. And, uh, you know, the idea was thanks to Th, we can say all these things beginning with the, like thirsty and thimble and thick and you know thanks or and this is where my aunt's genius comes in we can say nothing because the is part of nothing so I mean I don't even think it's rose colored glasses when I say that my aunt was a truly great lyricist um, but then you know having Lee and Morgan sing it and dance it was also pretty cool as you know, one of your mother's main characters was Vi, the head waitress at Vi's Diner. And uh, there were a bunch of songs. Well, there were a bunch of them, but let me see how many I can remember. I remember one that was actually... I'm sort of surprised that it got past anybody because um, it was called Things Just Bees That Way. You remember that one? Word fragment B as as what it was uh, explaining ah I, it's too bad that I can't remember any, any of the lyrics because it was it, the end line of every song was things just bees that way which you know from the surface just looks like it's part of the song but then on the other hand it's really things just are that way but she's saying things just bees that way and so that kind of uh colloquialism you know sort of skates close to the edge particularly a white woman writing it and so you know it's interesting that that got through it didn't didn't really hold up as one of the ones I mean nobody comes up to me and says that they remember that one it wasn't on the album or anything like that but maybe but. it's been collectively erased or maybe we just thought it was about the letter B yeah I think so uh, and of course, I mean, going beyond the ones that your mother was in, my aunt wrote the Easy Reader song. She wrote that great one. It was it wasn't really a song. It was a routine, the giggles goggles routine between Rita and Judy, and um, lots of other great stuff. Did Elaine have anything to do with the silhouette? There's a silhouette of Morgan and Lee. Did she have anything to do with it? It was her idea. Oh, actually. I love that yep. one. That was her idea. And that is, you know, I said that nobody said the other song to me. That is another one that people go, oh, I love the electric company. Bah, at, bat, 
cat at cat and i'm like my aunt came up with that idea that's fantastic. So, that was yeah. one of my favorite. I loved looking at their, their silhouettes. Of mm-hmm. course, they probably had the best lips on the whole show. So right. it made for right. <laughs> it made for a very good and juicy silhouette. Yeah. And in the script, that number was called Silhouette Blend because they were teaching blended words. And so, or blended, you know, letter combinations. And so, plus there was a silhouette. So it was called Silhouette Blend. My mother, Lee, had such a love of words and reading and books and literature. Mm-hmm. Obviously, your Aunt Elaine had the same thing. Mm-hmm. How on earth did she get involved in With writing even anything like this? It's a ver- was, she, was she a teacher? No. Actually, before I answer that question, I remember your mom did the Gladys the Glowworm number in the first episode and my aunt wrote that too. So well, I um, love Gladys. She had a great outfit and great horn rimmed glasses. Mm-hmm. And her she little did. pod her little cocoon pod body. That's right. Hanging out in the tree. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure as as we go along I'll keep thinking of others that you know, the two of them were combined. But, but uh but to answer that question about my aunt, she, um, I mean, my aunt was really one of those kind of savant people that just couldn't manage most of her life and really kind of was too fragile for this world. And yet somehow she was, she just, like, the lyrics, she channeled them. She did, I remember towards the end of her life, I'm skipping ahead here, but towards the end of her life when I was in charge of her care in a lot of ways and we were sitting in the waiting room of cedar sinai right across the street from where we are and we were waiting she she finally agreed to attend to some things that she'd neglected for a long time and she said i can't take this i have no discipline i said well what about the song she said effortless i snapped my fingers and they came out of me no effort whatsoever i said do you realize how many people would labor to create the kind of lyrics you did? And she said, yeah, I do understand that. So it was really kind of her her talent. Um, but as far as how she first uh, brought it into the world, uh, I believe that she was a greeting card writer before anything else. For Hallmark? I don't even know if it was Hallmark. It was for somebody. And... So she had greeting cards published, and I know that her, I think her first job in TV, she wrote some lyrics for some performers that were sort of known at that moment, one named Arthur Siegel, he was a cabaret guy, and uh, she wrote for uh, a singer called Isabel Robbins, and uh, so she, she got gigs like that, but her first TV gig was not as a writer lyricist it was as an associate producer for captain kangaroo and so captain kangaroo i remember captain kangaroo anyone of our generation and and older does remember him and she actually used to um she had a little thing going at one point with this guy gus allegretti who was uh, the puppeteer of everybody. He was Mr. Moose. He was the dancing bear. He was Bunny Rabbit. And he also played the live action character Dennis the Painter. He married Carol Lawrence. But when my sister and I used to watch the show, and Mr. Moose would come on, and my aunt would come in the room and she'd say, Mr. Moose is my boyfriend. And we'd go, No, he isn't. She'd say, He is. He is my boyfriend. No, he's not. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was her first job and then from what, the, so, so what year now what year are we talking about when you were late like, 60s late 60s what so, were her parents doing what was her childhood like they were immigrants they were um refugees from the pogroms in ukraine eastern europe wherever they were they were um they were of two very different uh, social stratas back in the old country. Mm-hmm. My uh, my grandmother was going to be 
uh, she was studying to be a nurse, but then when, you know, everything got ripped apart, uh, that trajectory that she had started on didn't, uh, apply here came to an end so she kind of had to start all over again and then my grandfather who she looked down her nose at back in the old country he was a pharmacist and because the pickings were so slim they got together but she was just angry about her fate for the rest of her life and so my aunt and my mother their two children kind of grew up in the you know in the wake of that um and elaine was always just this kind of genius misfit person heart was always in the right place um sometimes in the throes of her sensitivity she could you know get highly reactive to things but it was never out of being mean Mm -hmm. my father was alan funt of canna camera who i mean electric company and canna camera are probably equally known but my father himself was more of a known entity than than Elaine Laren was, but um, they were not brother and sister. They were brother and sister-in-law. Okay. And so a lot of people think that my dad helped my aunt into the business, mm-hmm. and that was not true at all. Her her uh, efforts were all her own. As a matter of fact, they they kind of were friendly rivals. So he wasn't really one to necessarily open doors in that way. I see. Uh, yeah. But. You know, once she got to the show, I mean, she loved your mother, Lee. She was, you know... Why uh, was that? Why why do you think Elaine was fond of Lee? Well, I I gather, first of all, that Lee was a lovely person and that you would be hard-pressed not to be fond of her. But I think other than that, uh, she felt a kinship and she also felt like she really did her songs well, you know. So that had something to do with it. She felt the same way about um, a Melanie Henderson from the Short Circus. She, in fact, she actually wrote a song for her. It was a little too. There's a few of my aunt's songs that were a little too good. Most of the ones that have held up were, um, you know, I mean, it's one thing to write a really great set of lyrics. It's another thing to write a great set of lyrics that that does what it's there to do, which is teach children a lesson. The cast album from the Electric Company won a Grammy. Yes. And I remember mom receiving a Grammy award. Your aunt had a lot to do with that Grammy happening. Yeah, that was a nice for children's television. That was a that was a nice um, bit of serendipity was that the cast album came out that first season so and my aunt had a lot of songs on it so a lot of the songs that have been reinforced in people's memory were because they were on the album and at that time an album was the only thing you could listen to over and over and over again this was this was even before vcrs so um you know and the electric company went on for many more seasons after she left but it wasn't until much more recent years with DVDs and downloads and whatnot that people started knowing some of those later songs. But what, but the songs of my aunts that were on that album aren't the ones I would say were too good. The, 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 there was a couple of songs she wrote, like the one for Melanie, it was called Feelings or Funny Things. Oh, I remember that one. I, I mean, it was a great song that perfectly captured, you know, teenage angst. But it wasn't about to teach anybody to read. So uh, in that regard, it was a little too good. But that said, she felt a kinship with Melanie, just like she did with your mom. She felt a kinship with Rita, and they were big admirers of each other. I think she felt the same way about Judy, but I don't remember Judy getting as much airtime. But I do have a great anecdote about Morgan Freeman, which was... um, this is some, I, if I had it here, I'd say let's play a copy of it. But you know, Morgan's signature song on the show was "Easy Reader." Yeah. And no, you don't have a copy of what I'm oh. about to refer to. You don't trust me. Oh. Um, my sister Juliet, who is a big fan of the show, she's a year older than me. Um, she was a big fan of "Easy Reader." And she also, at that time, um, you know, like a lot of kids. Uh, 
that at that moment in time her thing was drawing and painting. My aunt had an idea of rewriting the lyrics as a birthday greeting and she called the song Easy Painter. And one day she took Morgan aside and she said, just let's hop into the studio for a second. We've got the basic track here. I'll turn it on. Just record this one verse for my niece. And so he sang this Easy Painter. And he only just did the verse, but the 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 keeper is that the last line is she's terrific, yeah you bet. Happy birthday, Juliet. It's <laughs> awesome. And we have that. <laughs> so, that is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That so, is wonderful. That was nice. And she also, by the way, you know, I mean, it's if you're a fan of the Electric Company, you know that it's taken a while for Morgan Freeman to sort of. Um, admit in public that he was part of that show because he went on to be this real serious actor and for him that was it's not that he thought it was a bad show but he thought it was kind of kid stuff right right and, and my aunt was totally sympathetic and totally in his corner about that even though she was talking about her worry she would say this man was on the English stage with the finest actors and directors in the world of of course this is child's play for him in Mm -hmm. every sense did you did you watch the electric company oh sure sure it was yeah i mean listen i say this to people all the time if you either were a child in the 70s or had children in the 70s it was as big as any i mean it was equal to sesame street it was equal to mr rogers um, it, it's just that it was on for that short period of time, unlike those others that ran for forever. It's for sale right now on the Canon Camera website, and, was the, and, and that was my baby. 2004. 2004. It's um, already 2016. Yeah, that's right. DVDs were very big, especially TV on DVD, and so, it, you know, the logical next move was to put Canon Camera out on DVD. It and, had done well on VHS about 20 years before that. And so now we put that out, and so um, my brother and I basically, uh, we put together a single disc of The Greatest Moments, and then we put together a box set with that disc and complete episodes throughout the decades. And for those who don't know, the years that Candid Camera ran with your dad, Alan Funt, you know, being the host, was from when to when? My father's career took place from 1947 and started as a radio show called Candid Microphone. And then a year later, it became Candid Camera, and he did it on and off for 43 years. And then uh, wow, I had no idea the yeah. show ran that long, and I had no idea that it actually got its start in radio. That's right. It's a good thing he had more than just a great face for radio. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, and then in more recent years, my brother did a newer incarnation of the show. What's your brother's name? Peter. Peter. Funt. Peter Fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. I, I want to thank you um, for spending this time with me in my my mobile office in Beverly <laughs> Hills. Thank you very much. This was thank really great. Me. It was a nice little taste. Yeah, yeah. Anything you want to also say about Lee before we wrap up? Um, well... What you maybe thought of her as a kid watching her dance in a tuxedo and doing... Crazy Isadora Duncan dance moves. I just (laughs) thought she was really cool. I mean, everybody on that show was like, you know, was like a family member. But as far as any electric company stuff, you know, I got a master's in education a little while ago, and I um, uh, have a, what they call a temporary permanent job at a Jewish day school, and I'm doing what I can to incorporate little electric company moments into the curriculum in the day so so we uh this is a very uh rich heritage we both have you know to to be connected to all of this true it's very cool i don't i don't even clearly recall the trajectory between knowing that my aunt was part of the electric company i don't remember there was no great moment of you write for the electric company and there was no uh, prior knowledge that she did it before I started watching it. I just remember it sort of 
developing. Yeah. This, um, yeah. But um, well, it was different times. Also, I mean, there wasn't there wasn't necessarily the hype of celebrity that there is now. I mm-hmm. mean, it was great to see people doing mm-hmm. positive things like that. Yeah. However, I feel that the emphasis more at the time was on the work itself mm-hmm. and you know wh- you know working as a working as a whole of course it was a huge breakthrough in, in so many ways actually talking to children as if they were intelligent sure having sure. a multicultural cast yeah incorporating music and song right uh, you know in in teaching the basics of reading and writing the thought that it could actually be fun mm-hmm. but it's it's certainly not anything like Keeping up with the Kardashians, <laughs> well, of course not. or I'm, or I'm just even trying to think of any children's show right now. Actually, you know, that has so I... many different points of entry and engagement because they're like you've mentioned before. My mother used to say all the time that an alleged adult had come up to her mm-hmm. and told her that she watched The Electric Company, and she right. meant that affectionately because, of course, right. it was always billed as a children's show. Right. Right. But as you pointed out earlier, so many adults would also watch the show because it was just so well-written and yeah. so entertaining and so right. much fun. Of course, a lot of the parents would watch the show you know, with their yeah. children after school, but it really had this way of of cutting across, you know, yeah. what was perceived to be something that was for children. Mm-hmm. It really crossed the line to adulthood, which is probably why it's a show that's still so well regarded today. Well, and it also holds up it if holds you've never up. seen it before. I mean, you wouldn't think that something that is so, so 70s, there's no other decade it could have possibly taken place in when you see it. but And yet... Um, younger people who've never seen it say this is really good. Yeah, it's kind. Of, I always thought of it as being the sly in the family stone mm-hmm. of public television <laughs> shows <laughs> for kids. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank That's you. really awesome. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's thank awesome. You. Yay, we made it happen. We did. <laughs>